What up dolls? It is me, Chad the Diamond, and welcome to my first doll customizing video for this channel. This episode, I'll be customizing Strutted Yasmin. I'll keep her face unchanged since I'm still practicing on how to repaint faces. I'll be giving her cerulean hair with some light blue highlights to both complement and enhance her eyes, and dressing her in an all-black look comprised of a cropped vinyl jacket with a black fur trim, an adornment of harness straps up and down her legs, stomach, and bust, taking huge inspiration from this creepy yeha look. For accessories, silver hoop earrings, and for shoes, I'll be giving her black, pleaser-esque stripper boots. You know, just a simple outfit for church on Sunday morning. Let's begin by shaving off all her hair close to the plugs as possible to make it easier to scrape the glue from inside her head. High bald. Then pop out the head. So for some reason, the hair glue was extremely strong on this doll. Like the glue was a thick hardened thing that only softened whenever I dunked her head in boiling water. This made plucking her hair more easy, but I kept having to put her back in the boiling water since the glue would cool down and harden again. I did this about five times, which increasingly worried me since her head was getting softer each time. I was afraid it would have deformed the vinyl, but it turned out to be fine. So now we can take acetone to wipe off the brown factory paint or not. Okay, maybe don't use acetone from a Dollar Tree nail polish remover. It's just not strong enough. We'll just paint over it instead. You'll always want to paint the scalp of the head the same color as the hair you want to give your doll. So when the gaps between the plugs show, it won't be noticeable. I'm gonna still need to paint sealant over this so it doesn't chip when we reroute later. So as I set that aside to dry, here we have Skylar Bradshaw as she has been gracious enough to agree to donate her hair to Yasmin. Um, bitch, what? I got Skylar from Mercari since I plan to give Cheryl her eyes, but also thought might as well give Yasmin her hair too. Since this was my first time rerouting doll hair, I practiced on a couple of plugs to get a feel for the process and actually ended up running into a little puzzle. The shorter stalk of hair on the left is what you get when you do a normal reroute, since when you reroute, it's the middle of the stalk of hair that gets folded and wedged into the plug. But then you lose half the length of hair this way, and I want this doll to have hair past her knees. So I figured to just fold the stalk of hair closer to the ends, but then part of the rooted stalk sticks out awkwardly short as you can see here. My solution then was to extend the length of my rerouting needle to ensure those awkward bristles get pushed in all the way. And it worked! So now we can reroute the entire head. And after a relaxing three hours, no, seriously, it actually was relaxing, I'm done! Don't mind the tangled mess at the bottom. They're just the strands that didn't get plugged in, but stuck onto the hairs that did. We'll brush it out later. It was so exciting seeing her even at this stage since I got to imagine future dolls that I want to reroute and the way it just transforms a doll's look. Let's glue the hair plugs using Fabri-Tac. So immediately, I knew this was going to give me problems. Starting off, I don't like how I can't see how much of the glue I'm squeezing out and if it was doing a good job at coating the plugs. And the hairs that I did feel the glue nozzle contacting felt like a thick, clumpy blob, which confused me because I didn't know where that blob could have come from. Furthermore, and in a mindless way, I just thought to kept squeezing glue. I don't know why I thought that would have fixed anything. This proved to be making a problem worse because I was basically just gluing the blob instead of the inside surface of her head where the hair should be glued to. Here's an animation to explain how the blob formed. It formed while I was rerouting. By extending my rerouting needle, I was actually plugging really long strands in her head. All those strands met and crowded in the middle, and this is what I was all gluing. Literally a fucking mess. I thought to just let it dry as much as possible and come back for it in the morning to deal with. It was the next day, I stuck a screwdriver in there to feel and felt the glue wasn't dried all the way, and decided I didn't want to delay any further, so time for brain surgery. By opening up her head, I can remove the gluey blob. This is so gross, but getting to remove it is so satisfying at the same time. And this is the blob. It's almost as big as her head. So now I can glue these plugs and be assured I'm hitting all of them because I can see. After a day, her hair is glued in place and I can close the incisions with Gorilla Glue. I was so excited to finally get to wash her hair and detangle everything. 
That whole glue fiasco had me a little anxious, and I was just hoping that in the end she would look like no mishap even happened. For her hairstyle, I had planned to give her a high ponytail and making it look extra long by doing the double tie ponytail trick. This is where you start by sectioning the back part of the hair to tie into the first ponytail, and then sectioning the front parts to form the high ponytail that cascades over and blends in to hide the first ponytail. But unfortunately, I didn't have enough hair to work with, so she just ended up looking like a deflated Ariana Grande. I gathered her hair in a high ponytail and used a section to wrap around the elastics, gluing it in place. Yeah, this is not a hairstyle I am planning to undo. Oh my god, and now that her hair journey is through, girl, we can get to making her outfit. Like I showed in the sketch earlier, I wanted to recreate something like this creepy Reha harness galore piece. That's what I'm calling it. So I start by taking this roll of shiny vinyl and cutting it into strips of varying lengths that I guesstimated to wrap at differing points on her legs. You can also measure her legs for how long you want the vinyl to be, if you want to take the guesswork away. Then take a jump ring and feed the PVC strip through to hook over. Dot some Gorilla Glue, then press down. Then grab a hair clip to secure it in place while it dries. I decided to embellish this harness with five jump rings, but it's up to you. When the glue dries, hook over the PVC again on the other side and repeat the ensuing steps mentioned before. Repeat these steps until you get something like this. As you can see, each harness is detailed a little differently depending on how many jump rings I put and how I arrange them. I am so pleased with these. It's definitely several steps up from the body harness I made half a year ago on this other doll. Back then though, I just glued it onto her body. I wanted to make sure I was able to take these new ones on and off in case I wanted to dress up a different doll in them. Originally, I was going to create harnesses that horizontally covered her stomach and chest as well but changed my mind last minute and decided to make this body harness instead, using the same method of wrapping differently lengthened strips of PVC over jump rings and gluing them until I got this shape. Let's put it on her! I align the harness appropriately over her bust, pull the long bottom strap under and over, lay it on her back and velcro the shoulder straps onto it. Then velcro the side straps over the back strap. Oh my god, and there she is! Guys, I literally screamed seeing this entire getup come together like this. Oh my god. Just the vision, you know? Like, the, the vision. vision. And by the way, no, she won't be wearing anything to cover her nipples. Because here at Chad the Diamond Industries, we look to free the nipple whenever we can. Free the nipple. That actually would be a great drag name. Now, to put on the finishing details, I'm using a toothpick to dot metallic silver acrylic paint on each strap to look like the studs. And there we are! Oh my god, bitch! Let's quickly make her hoop earrings by taking these mini charms and painting them with the same silver paint. Then two coats of glossy sealant. And finally, the shoes. This was so satisfying to see transform and take on that strong stripper boot graphic silhouette and shape that I am obsessed with. So I was initially going to just have these be just a simple black boots with gloss varnish over it. But then I thought these shoes would have been a flat note when paired with the details of the rest of her outfit. So I bust out the metallic silver paint to add some drama. These boots have such a beautifully detailed mold to them from the buckles and stitching and studs that I'm glad I didn't skip this step. And after varnishing the boots with gloss, this is how they turned out. I, 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 I mean, the woman was too stunned to speak. It's time to now assemble her. I'm heating up her neck hole to soften the vinyl for an easy plopping back on of the head. Taking got to be glue hair gel on a small paintbrush, I'm flattening any flyaways to sleek up her ponytail. And after a dollop of gloss varnish to her lip and putting on her hoop earrings, she is done.